Hey everybody, JC here with another TNI toy review. And today's review is in association with JediInsider.com, your number one news source for everything Star Wars. And for today's review, we're going to take a little advanced look at the upcoming Star Wars The Black Series Princess Leia Organa and Bounty Hunter Bush Disguise, or Bosch, however you want to pronounce it. Now, we're going to be kicking off, this is kind of uh, to kick off our celebration, Star Wars celebration coverage, which begins tomorrow, April 16th. So if you want to see all the latest news out of, out of the celebration convention, um, be sure to check out the site starting tomorrow, JediInsider.com. And we're going to look at this figure and then the other two figures in this wave in the next day or so. Um, IG-88 and Commander Co uh, the clone Commander Cody are the other two figures in this wave. So we'll be looking at all three of those over the next couple of days along with our coverage of the Star Wars Celebration uh, Convention. So anyway, uh, this figure comes packaged in the same kind of style of packaging we've seen with all the other Black Series figures. You've got the f uh, window box packaging, you've got the figure clearly displayed along with the accessories. Um, you've got the little medallion image of the character up in the top corner. You've got the Star Wars, the Black Series logo down below and it tells us this is figure 16 in the series. Uh, we've got the blue print, uh, the blue background lighting, um, you know, it looks like that Death Star, but uh, with, with this year's packaging, it's in blue as opposed to the previous orange. Then on the back of the packaging, we've got uh, the Star Wars logo, an image of the character, and the name of the character, and then some legalese, and of course the Disney and Hasbro logos. Okay, so let's get this figure open and take a look at what's inside. Okay, so here's a look at the figure outside of the packaging. And I have to say the overall look of the figure is pretty nice. I think the sculpting on it is good. And even the paint applications, though, I would have liked to have seen a few more are pretty decent. No, no serious paint, paint blemishes of any kind that I've found. I like the detailing on the helmet. Um, she's got the green uh, piece up top and then she's got this silver thing that kind of sticks out. Don't really know what that's supposed to be, but you know, it looks good. Some ni even some nice ridge sculpting on there. So it looks like a little ray gun or something on her helmet, but I don't know what that's technically supposed to be. Um, she's also got the black, she's got this black stripe kind of sculpted underneath the, the green part. Um, and this is actually, I think, her eyepiece that she looks out of. I used to think that she looked out of the green portion, but, but I, 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 I don't know what that's supposed to be. But um, she actually, her eyepiece, I think, is underneath here. Um, and they've done that in black, so I think that looks good. And then she's got some scuff marks on, on the sides of her helmet and like some reddish uh, scuff marks. Now, I think that's supposed to be there. I don't think that's paint error. Um, I, I hope it's not because I actually think it looks better. It gives her, you know, that kind of scuffed up look. You know, again, my only real complaint with the paint apps is it's a little bit too clean for the most part for like a bounty hunter. But, and on this side, you can see she's got some silver scuff marks on the corners and again some of that red red scuffing so I, I think overall that all looks re really good she's got the breathing apparatus on the front of her mask which is like a dark metallic silver and then the rest of the helmet is like that kind of dark orange color uh, she's got a backpack which has got some nice writing on it um, now the backpack is removable um, she's just got a peg and a hole on her back so you can take that off She's also got this uh, strap that goes around her shoulder um, and, and the belt that goes around her waist and that's all one piece and it is remove it's separate from the figure. I don't think it's removable. I, I haven't found any way to remove it. Um, they, she's got a soft goods cape and it's actually kind of uh, wrapped around the strap and it, like with stitching so it's not removable either. And she's got some um, some pouches and stuff sculpted on here and then there's a peg on the inner side of the belt that actually fits in this hole on her waist so it kind of keeps the belt in place and tight on her waist so I like that and then more sculpting detail on the front of the strap and you know, she's got these gold metallic almost looks like bullets though I don't think they're bullets since you know this is space and everything but you know some kind of like little capsules that she has on her on her strap She's got the silver piece on her chest. I don't know what that's supposed to be, but you know, just nice attention to detail for the most part. And like on her hands, she's got the little uh, spikes that you saw her in the movie have. And those are those are actually sculpted, so they're like you know bumps on her hand, and then they're painted with silver metallic. 
and she's got um, this thermo detonator which is removable from the belt and we'll look at that a little closer in a minute and she's got the skirt piece which is a, a soft plastic though it, it's hard enough that it does limit some of her movement at the waist section and again we'll look at that closer when we look at articulation um, but otherwise I think you know solid paint application she's got just the basic beige on her boots and the skirt piece and her upper arms and then she's got the maroon uh, paint on her lower arms and her, her chest section and uh, and then the almost like orange type pants and then taking a close look at the head sculpt without the helmet on, you know, I think it's okay. Um, I, the eyes are off a little bit on this figure to me. Um, of course, the same was kind of the same with uh, the Slave Leia figure. But on that one, it was more she had cross eyes, whereas this one, it's more like I would almost classify it as like droopy eyes. So I don't know, the eyes are a little bit off to me on on this head sculpt. But otherwise, I, I, I don't think it looks too bad. I, I like the way the hair is sculpted, uh, how like a st strand of hair comes down over her face. So I, I think that looks good. Um, she has kind of a, her, some pinkish coloring in her cheeks. And she's got the red lipstick, or red lips. I don't know if she's wearing lipstick, but she's got definitely has red lips. Now for accessories, besides besides the backpack, which as I mentioned is removable, she comes with a removable helmet. And I think the helmet, you know, as I said, looks good on it. And even though, you know, they have to kind of make these helmets a little bit on the big side to fit over the head, I think proportion-wise it, it looks good on this figure. And it does definitely fit tightly on the head. In fact, it, it's kind of hard to pull it off um, because it fits so tightly on the head. And the mask itself is just kind of that rubber uh, material that we often see with like helmets and stuff in this line. She also comes with her weird uh, blaster. I, I don't know what this is supposed to be. Staff. Uh, you know exactly. It's a weapon of some kind. But I don't know exactly what it is. it's classified as. But um, she comes with that. And again it's not a lot of detail as far as paint applications go. But it does have some nice sculpting on it. You know, pretty much similar to what we've seen with other accessories in this line. And she'll hold it, she can hold it in either hand, her left or right, and it fits a little, like on her right hand, you can see it does fit tightly, though a lot of times it just kind of slides down and uh, to the ground. So, you know, she basically kind of, in the movie, you know, held it as almost like a staff. So, you know, definitely you can get her to hold it in either hand. Um... Yeah, on the other hand, she's got the thumb that sticks out, so you kind of have to pry it through the thumb. But again, you know, she can get it in there. And it fits kind of loosely, as I said before, but you, know, you can just kind of have it drop to the ground. And finally, she comes with a thermal detonator like we see her using in the movie. And this, again, doesn't have a whole lot of paint detail. It's got a little metallic silver stripe that goes around the middle of it. But otherwise, that's about it for paint detail. But one, the thing I do like about it is um, she's got this little uh, peg on her belt, and they've put a hole on the thermal detonator, so you can actually have her hold, uh, store the thermal detonator on her belt. So I do like that feature. And then she doesn't like grip the thermal detonator, but you can kind of just like set it in her hand, you know, turn her hand around and set it in there, like you see her in the movie. And she can actually do that. Um, with both both hands, though it fits better um, in the in the left hand than in the right. So the figure stands at just a little bit over five and a half inches tall. And with the helmet, it's maybe you know a hair even taller than that. But basically, the figure stands at about five and a half inches tall. Now, compared to the Slave Leia figure that was released in this line, she's definitely on the tall side. You know that Slave Leia figure is definitely much shorter. Um, than this Leia. Now you might expect, you know, Leia in, in Bounty Hunter disguise because she's wearing armor to be taller than like, like without the armor. But you know, to me, these two figures really are not in very good scale with one another. However, that being said, I would say it's probably the Slave Leia that's more out of scale with the other figures in the line and is on the short side um, than the Bush figure being out of scale. Because I think the Bush figure actually fits in better um, with the other figures scale wise. You know, you can see here next to Bosk that she's uh, a little bit sh uh, shorter than Bosk but 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 I think the scale works pretty good and again here is next to fellow bounty hunter Boba Fett and again Fett's definitely taller than Bush but by not not by a whole lot 
And then finally, for one more comparison, here's her, her prisoner, uh, Chewbacca. And you can see Chewbacca is definitely much taller, like we saw in the movie. So again, I think the scale on this figure is actually better than that Slave Leia figure and fits in better with the other figures in this line. Okay, so articulation on this figure is pretty good. It's and pretty much on par with what we've seen with the other figures in the line. The head's on a ball hinge joint, so she can look left and right with no problem, and she can look up and down even with the helmet on. And I'll pop the helmet off just so you can see the the joint. Right. So you can see it's a ball hinge joint there, and she's got good up or down movement there, with or without the helmet. Arms are attached with your standard uh, ball hinge joint at the shoulder, so she's got good rotation there. She can get her arm out. No bicep swivel. Uh, swivel at the elbow. Single hinged elbow so she can bend her um, elbow about that much and then she's got the swivel and the hinges on the wrist So she's got good up and down movement there at the wrist There is a midsection joint so she's got some uh, rotation there at the midsection And it's a limited a little bit with the harness that goes over her shoulder though She's also got waist uh, swivel too So if you want to kind of move get that that harness to move it's better to have her rotate at the waist and she has some crunch there at the midsection, not a whole lot, but a little bit. And she can look up at the midsection there, so that's pretty good. Now, the leg movement at the waist is uh, restricted a, a great deal because of the skirt piece. Um, you know, it's a softer plastic, but it's still hard enough that it really limits how much you can move the legs there at the waist. So she can only do the splits about that much, and she can get her leg forward um, about that much. And then not really, she can get her leg back about that much, but, you know, really not much at all. She does have a thigh swivel. And then she does have the double jointed knees. She does not have a sw swivel at the boot cuff or anything, but she does have ankle pivot. So good movement at the ankles. And then two peg holes on the bottom of her feet. Okay, so that's my view. Overall, I like this figure. I think it looks pretty good for the most part. I like the accessories. I like the thermal detonator and how it attaches to the belt. I think the helmet looks pretty good. Um, you know, sometimes with these figures with the removable helmets, they have to make the helmets kind of big, you know, to fit over the head sculpts. And I think proportion-wise, I think the helmet looks pretty good on this figure. And it's definitely tight. You know, in fact, it's it, it's kind of hard sometimes to get it off the, the figure, so it's definitely fits on there nice and tight. My only real complaint would be maybe a few additional paint applications just to give it a kind of wear, wear and tear look to it. You know, she's a little bit too clean for a bounty hunter. Scale wise, you know, she's definitely taller than the Slave Leia, but I, in my opinion, I think it's the Slave Leia scale that's a little bit off. I think that figure is a little bit on the short side, and I think this one scale wise fits in better with the other figures in the line. So this figure should probably start hitting shelves next month in May, along with the rest of the wave, which includes IG-88 and Commander Cody, which we will be looking at over the course of the next uh, couple days. Uh, we'll also have a full gallery of images for this figure over at JediInsider.com. There's a link in the description below. And then, as I mentioned before, we're going to be kicking off our Star Wars celebration coverage starting tomorrow, April 16th. So if you want to see the new stuff coming from Hasbro, uh, the new Black Series 6-inch and 3 and a quarter inch stuff, maybe some Saga Legends, we're not going to see any Episode 7 toys um, at this convention, unfortunately. Earliest we might see any of that is probably San Diego Comic Con. But definitely if you want to see what's coming for the Black Series uh, from Hasbro, be sure to start tuning in to Jedi Insider tomorrow for complete celebration coverage. And that's my review. As, as always, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think. If you're so inclined, please like the video. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. And until next time, I'll catch you later.